Hi everybody. Sorry I'm a couple minutes late. Hoping that our electricity doesn't go out. We're being hit with a big storm right now, big wind and rain event. Um, and evidently we're supposed to have some pretty high gusts of, uh, of wind. And the first time that I started to go live, we had some flickers and so I panicked a little bit and I stopped it, but I'm, uh, we're just going to cross our fingers and hope that the electricity doesn't go out. So thank you for joining me today. I um, am trying very hard to make this be a regular um, event on approximately one o'clock on Monday afternoons that I will demonstrate at least one card. And um, I'm so glad for anybody that's able to join me. If you're not able to join me and you want to catch it later, it will be on my Facebook page and I'm posting everything to you, YouTube. So you won't miss out on anything um, and you can watch it at your leisure. So last week we made an easel card using the frosted gingerbread. So we made this cute little card. Hi Carol, thank you for joining. Uh, we made this cute little easel card and we made a gift tag that had a removable ornament. We're using the same product this time. We are using the uh, frosted gingerbread stamps and uh, I'll show it to you when it goes down and then the dies and I, this should show fine. Yeah, it does. Anyway, so that's what we're using and this cute DSP, I mean, it just doesn't stop, right? This is just such a cute and festive and fun um, collection of items. So this will be the last time that I demonstrate the Frosted Gingerbread collection because I need to move on to some other collections, but I did want to, um, to do at least, well, I want to do a card and then another gift tag. And I'm really kind of excited for this. Before I start, I want to make sure that everybody's aware that we have a special promotion that starts tomorrow. It only lasts for two days. It's a six or three days, 16th, 17th, and 18th. Ink, ink pads, cardstock, and dies just out of the annual catalog, which I just had sitting here. It is. So just out of this catalog, so not the holiday catalog, but just the annual catalog, those dies are all on sale. And I will be doing a post about it. I will also be sending out some information on my newsletter. Now, if you don't get my newsletter and you would like to, will you please send me a, a message on Messenger? Um, or you can put it in comments if you're, if you're comfortable with that whatever you're most comfortable with, but I would love to add you to my newsletter, letting you know of any special promotions or events that are taking place or anything special that I'm putting out uh, using Stamping Up products, okay? So, oh, and there's one other special going on right now, and that's the joining special. Normally for $99, you get $125 worth of product uh, for that very first order when you join Stampin' Up. My team name is Paper Blessings, and I would love to have you on my team um, if you were so inclined. I am just building a team, but it, it just means a lot to me. Everything that I do with Stamping Up um, really touches my heart, and I've made some incredible friendships that I will treasure forever. And um, I just got through uh, going through the yearly Stampin' Up! convention, it's called On Stage, and we had such a blast and we learned so much, it's so uplifting. So anyway, if you were so inclined and you wanted to join, the special this month, through the end of this month, is $75 instead of $99, and it's still for $125 worth of product. Just letting you know. And that's as far as I'm gonna push on that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and point the camera down to my desktop so that you can see today's project. Give me one minute. And going to turn our camera around. And will somebody let me know if the orientation is correct? Is this the bottom where my fingers are? 
I, I'm hoping. So today's, here's the project that we're going to make. This is a front flap card. It's one that I've made recently with my mystery stamping group on a Thursday night. But I thought it would be so cute to uh, make a card uh, in the same design, just using this particular suite of product. So here's the card we're gonna make. Here's the card we made last week and the gift tag that we made last week. We're gonna make another gift tag this time, but we're gonna do it on the fly. So we'll get started with the card first. Super easy card. Super, super easy card. I will post all the dimensions like I did last week uh, separately after this video. That way I don't waste your time me going back and forth looking at my notes. So this is eight and a quarter by four and a quarter and I'm scored at five and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that real quick and because my desktop is slightly textured, I need to use my piercing mat. And there we go. So that's nice and scored. I'm going, I've got, I've got all my pieces already cut out here. So mostly you won't have to watch me cut anything. You're just going to watch, mostly watch me put it together. So I'm going to take this first piece of designer series paper and I'm going to adhere it to this front flap. Let's see, let's make sure I've got everything in everything in camera. Maybe I need to back off this camera just slightly. And I think you can still see. There we go. So I'm just going to, now this paper is two-sided and it was really quite, um, as you can see, I've got some ornaments and some bells on the other side that would make great, decor ooh, de great decorations for the front of the card, but um, I made the decorations different this time. Last time I cut them out of the designer series paper. This time I used the dies, cut them out of cardstock. And used another die to put the um, frosting on the top. So I will be showing you all of that. And it sounds more difficult than it was because I used adhesive strips. So it kind of went on like a sticker made my own sticker and I put it on. So here I like to use the multi-purpose glue because it, it doesn't dry absolutely instantly. And I can, it do, does dry pretty quickly, but I've got time to maneuver that and get that um, designer series paper pretty straight. And I do, I had a feeling I had a little bit of extra glue on there. When that glue dries, it's gonna leave a little shiny mark by the time we get to the end of the card, I'll be able to show you how to remove that. I have an eraser that I use specifically for removing any uh, adhesives that are visible. Okay, so our next step is, this is gonna be the inside of our card and we need to decorate it. Now, because this card, part of it is going to be visible. These corners are gonna be visible, as you can see here. Like that, so I wanna be careful about any stamping that I do on the inside of this card. So what I've done here is I just stamped Happy Holidays and I just put a, a strip of the designer series paper here. Mostly because I felt like these decorations were a little bit big for what I was doing on here. And I didn't really wanna use the peppermints because this was more about gingerbread and icing, right? So I used the designer series paper. So I'm going to go ahead and and bet that I did not cut, well maybe I did, maybe it's right here. <laughs> you like all my little scraps, my pieces of, I don't throw any of it away. Isn't that cute? I don't throw any of it away because it will all be able to be used. I did cut a piece and I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to stamp Happy Holidays in Old Olive. Double checking and making sure that people really can still see me. Yeah, this convention that we just had, it was so wonderful. There were all kinds of talks, um, several about 
making sure we don't overdo it and that we uh, remember to take time to rest and to stretch and be mindful of ourselves and not just constantly put all of our energy into other people. It's important to put energy into other people, but it w they were reminding us that it's also very important for us to take care of ourselves because if we don't, then we don't have anything left to give other people. All right, I'm going to stamp my happy holidays right in the center here. And you know what, while my green is out, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment that goes on the front of the card. Then I can put my ink away. So here, you'll notice that I stamped the sentiment in the lower right corner of this front piece of basic white. So I'm going to do that again. And it looks like I got a fair amount of ink on here. That looks good. Now I can close up my ink and put it out of the way. All right, set that to one side for a second. So I can get back to this other step. So this piece of paper is three by five and a half and it's scored at one half inch. So it's just scored right here. I'm going to just burnish it with my bone folder. And then this gets adhered to this side of the inside of the card. And basically the back flap here is gonna be hidden between the back, the back card stock and the front. So it'll be nice and clean. So I just need to put I could use tear and tape or I could use a little bit of adhesive. I like to use adhesive because I like to make sure mine's nice and straight. And if I use tear and tape, I have a tendency to be just a titch crooked and I have no idea why. Something I'm doing for sure. So I'm centering that and I'm not measuring it. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm pressing down my strip on the back just going to hold it for a second till it's glued down and it appears to be and I still have a free moving flap so that's good so now I can adhere this to the inside of the card trying not to use too much glue this glue holds real, real well, and I try to make sure I don't let any squish out the, the corners. And I center it, and I like to make sure that my perimeter, it matches. So I have about an eighth of an inch here, about an eighth of an inch here, and about an eighth of an inch here. And it looks slightly crooked to me, but because I used the green glue, there we go. I think I've got that nice and straight now. All right. So this is going to go like this. We are going to take another piece of designer series paper and adhere it down right here. Isn't it kind of a crime to, to know I'm gluing down these ornaments? But like I showed you last week, you can use those ornaments like this or you can make them. This is out of cardstock like this. So you just have to pick and choose how you're going to use your decorations. The same dies cut out these cookies as cut out the star version of the designer series paper. So it's not even a separate set of dies, it's the same set of dies. It's pretty economical and it gives you such a wide range of choices for designing. Again, I'm going to position my designer series paper so that I have an equal perimeter around all sides. Well, I'm glad the electricity quit flickering. I was really panicking there right before we started. Of course, I probably shouldn't say that so, so quickly. I am now going to adhere 
this pre-stamped, or not pre, you saw me do it, to this mat that's on the back. And then I'm gonna pop that up on dimensionals and we're going to place that. And actually, you know what? I think we, I'm gonna change that a little bit because this needs a second to dry. And we're going to apply just a little bit of ink to this, these gingerbread cutout stars, um, just to make them look a little bit more rich. And I'm gonna use a blending brush to do it. And then I will do this stage here. And during that period, this ink will have dried. The reason that's important is because I used adhesive strips on the back of these, making them stickers. And if this is still wet from the ink, they won't, they won't stick right away. I am not worried about blotches or anything using the blending brush on these cookies because I am putting the frosting over and I want these to kind of have depth. So can you see the difference in the color of that cookie versus the color of this cookie? There, there's just slight, I'm using tone on tone. This is cinnamon cider, but I'm just going ahead. And yes, I'm getting ink on my fingers. I'm okay with it. because I've got a chamois here that I'll just wipe off my fingers with. So I just added a little bit of depth of color. I'm gonna let that dry before we put the sticker on. And this is a die cut. That's, this is from the same set of dies from the same set. I mean, it's, this is just a really great set. While that's drying, let's see, let's make it so we don't look like we have burnt edges here. There we go. So I just wanted a little bit of depth and tone on my paper. I'm gonna let that dry and I am going to grab my chamois, which oh, is all the way back here. My trusty chamois, which is all nice and wet. I'm just gonna use it to wipe off the ink off my hand. There we go. So now while that's drying, set that brush aside. Before I get to gluing that, I just wanna show you some of these dies. So we have a snowflake and there's two pieces. You can either cut out the designer series paper with this outline, <clears throat> or you can cut out cardstock with the outline and then cut out uh, a, a detail to go on top with this secondary piece. So we've got the snowflake, the bell, the ornament, and the star. Set that aside for a minute. Get back to gluing this. Sorry that I jumped around on you there. Ooh, downpour again. That wind makes it sound so much louder. Gosh, I almost wonder if you all can hear it. It is, whoa, super loud. And my poor husband is a groundskeeper and he is out in this weather. He's been keeping, touching base with me. It's pretty forested with big trees where he works and that's what I worry about is with the wind and the rain, I worry about any trees coming down and I don't want him near them when they do. All right, I got that positioned pretty well. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna pop this up on dimensionals because you see how this is just lifted a little bit right off of the uh, designer series paper? Holy moly, that rain is coming down hard. Maybe the wind that I had a little bit ago was was um, looking for my dimensionals that I thought I had laid out here. I will grab a new sheet. I had already grabbed a new sheet, but... Maybe that wind was just a precursor to this rain. Making my electricity flicker. Not right now though, thankfully. I'm going to move that dimensional. I think it's too close to the edge. I don't want it to accidentally show. I'm using red paper, so I, there we go. Just a little bit closer to the edge. All right, take these backers off. I think I got them all. I did position this. We're going to center this. And with this particular paper, it's pretty easy to center it. I can 
eyeball my pattern on the two sides and top and bottom. So there, <coughs> excuse me, there is that. All right, get these out of the way. Get a quick drink. And next we are going to put, we're almost done with this card. Next we're going to put these on top of our cutout stars. <clears throat> so one of the things that I did to make this easier is I, when I, before I ran these through the die, the die cutting machine, I applied these adhesive strips to the back of the cardstock. So after it came out, it basically has turned this, there was my, there was my other uh, dimensionals. It basically turned this into a sticker. My ink is dry now. So I just need to peel the back off from the adhesive strip. And I can now center this on that cookie. And if, if you're holding it and you can tell that you've got it centered in three of the points, you should be good to go. You shouldn't have to worry about repositioning uh, the other points. You should be pretty accurate right there. So there is one cookie. And peel off again. I mean, these are just a, a godsend. Let's see. And that one, they are in strips. And so every now and then you'll get a seam that you have to, I'll show you that so you can see what I mean. They don't come in a, I mean, it, it is a, okay. It is a um, solid sheet that you cut down to size, but within that sheet, there are strips. And here we go. So now the two cookies are assembled. I'm gonna get back to this adhesive and just show you really quick what I mean by that. Let's see if I can get one of these smaller pieces out. Can you see that seam right there? So. There's a strip, there's a strip. They make it, they don't have a solid back. Um, they've got it so that you can pull it off in smaller pieces. So that it is really, really, really handy. How many come in here? 12, 12 of these sheets come in a package. I've had this for most of a year already and I use it a lot. So pretty economical. All right, I'm now gonna use one dimensional to attach this cookie. <laughs> that rain is coming down so hard. So I'm gonna do it just about like that. And then I want this cookie to pop out more, so I'm actually gonna use two dimensionals. I'm gonna stack them. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to put one dimensional right here in the center. I'm gonna take off the back and I'm going to lay another dimensional right on top of it, making it, oh, got my fingernail stuck in the adhesive, there we go. Here we go, and that's about right. So we've got one cookie a little higher than the other. Now, I went back and forth with whether or not I should tie a ribbon on here. I tend to be somebody who likes to tie ribbons, but <clears throat> I couldn't find a good position for it. So, I don't know, I could try again. Like, I don't like it here. I, I don't wanna take away from anything over here. I just, I really couldn't find a good position for it. So I guess I'm not gonna put that on, but I will put on some of the wonderful gems. So the wonderful gems, uh, they come in red and clear. Let's see if I can get these close enough for you to see. There's actually a little bit of gold glitter on the clear, and there's like an iridescent glitter on the red. So I'm going to use my, take my pick tool, and the big end has a clay tip, and I use that clay tip to grab my gems with. So what it does is it just kind of sticks to the gem 
and then it holds it until you get it to where you want it. You lay it down and press it in place. So I'm using the clear on the cookie just because I liked that golden. Well, and because the gingerbread cookies that I make, I actually put gold sugar on. <laughs> so I guess that's why I did that is because that's my tendency. Then I have these red gems and I wasn't thrilled with my placement on here, but I can play with it again. So I do like kind of having them frame the cookies a little bit. Maybe if I use little instead of big. So I could go here, or I could go here. This is where I went last time. Now, here I used a big gem. What if I used a smaller gem? I don't know. I didn't change it up much, did I? But there we are. We've just finished the card. What do you think? Do you like it? I mean, these were so simple to run through the, the uh, cut and emboss machine. And again, this is what it looks like if you use the designer series paper. So a couple of really good options. Now we are going to make ourselves a gift tag. And I have not pre-designed it. We're gonna, well, I kind of thought it out because I had to cut some things out ahead of time. So I thought I would use this pattern from the designer series paper. Thought I would use a white background. Thought I would use, huh, can't remember the name of the punch. It's a something, it's, I wanna say it's a lovely label punch or a lovely, okay, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Right here in the back of the catalog, it is. It is, it is right here. Delightful Tag Topper. That's the name of this one. Delightful Tag Topper. Okay. So I like the width, let's see. I'm gonna take it down just a little bit so my width fits in my tag topper. So you like this? I've got all my little squish space going on here. I'm going to just take an eighth of an inch off of that. I think that would make it fit in my... Yep, that made it fit. Okay. So now my, the width is two inches. I want this to be a little bit smaller because I think I want this white to show a little bit. And you'll see why in a minute. So if this is too, I'm gonna take this down to, I'm gonna take this down to one and seven eighths. I don't need a ton of border on it, but I want a little bit. So basically, yeah, see that looks nice with the white on each side. Okay, now I need to determine the size of my, how long I want my label to be. So, but I'm gonna start by punching the top. And I'm sure there are lots of ways to go about this. So some people might tell me that I'm designing this all wrong, but I'm doing this on the fly and it's my label, so this is what we're doing. I'm turning it upside down so that I can make sure that my paper is centered from side to side. Giving that a good old punch. And there, isn't that a pretty, pretty top on that? I'm going to do the same thing with this, and this one's a little bit more narrow. Remember, I just made that an eighth of an inch more narrow. So when I'm centering this, I'm actually looking at this design and I'm making sure the sides of my paper are centered within that design. There we go. So now let's see how I did. I'm going to be, yep, my holes line up. Let's see, no, I'm not quite right. It looks like I could take a sliver of paper off right here. And it looks like that's gonna be the easier way to make that work. Again, we're doing this on the fly. This was not pre-designed. 
but I wanted to I wanted to offer up two tags and two cards and for any purchases that are twenty dollars or more I will send you the kit <clears throat> excuse me the kits to make these cards and these tags there we go I've got that centered now okay so now I need to determine how long I want my card well the label that I've picked is this big and I am tempted I think we're gonna take an inch and a half off of let's see move that label come on come on come on come on there we go we're gonna take an inch and a half off of the length of this and then I'm going to match the length so we are at that looks like three and five eighths let's see how close I am not too shabby I got it I nailed it okay so I'm going to adhere this to this I'm going to take the paper cutter out of our way so and I'm just going to use adhesive to do it some people would not some people would um, use the uh, stamp and seal That's not my favorite. I, I pr really do prefer to use the green glue. I'm going to line up my dots and line up my top there. And line up my bottom. It looks like my sides are, are mostly straight. It's actually going to hide a little bit with the, de the design I've picked out to put on here. Okay, we have a label. And what I've picked for us to put on the label is sending you peppermint kisses. Can't wait to show you what I've picked to, to scatter all over the front of this gift tag. But we're going to stamp, and I just felt my finger go right in the ink. Boy, I'm getting messy, messy today. Thankfully, I've got my chamois here. I can wipe my finger off on. This red ink would really show up if I messed up and touched something. Don't want to get it on any of my samples or anything. All right, sending you peppermint kisses. And taking that off, closing up that ink so I don't make any mistakes. I'm putting my dirty stamp over there. All right. I have got quite the amount of things going on here. Okay. So now, what I had pre pre-cut to put on this tag without actually having designed the tag is I cut out some circles and some peppermint swirls. So I cut these out using the adhesive strips. So actually when I cut out these, there was space in between and around the cookies and I just used that space of the, of the uh, white cardstock with the already attached adhesive strip to fill in with these spots. So I didn't waste any cardstock. But it is going to take me a second now to, because I didn't pre-apply any of these. And here we go. So again, I made stickers. And let's make sure I pick the right dot to put them on. Otherwise, I'm going to make a mess. So there. There is a peppermint kiss. So I'm going to make a few of those. I've got green and I've got red. You know, I actually am not too sure that the green is going to show up that well on here. I might just go all red. fingernails are 
just trashed. My husband and I have been moving a storage unit and going through tons of stuff. And my hands have taken a beating. So there's no, no fancy pretty nails, sorry. Come on. It was easier when it all came off in one strip, but evidently I hit one of the seam areas here. <laughs> Let's see if the big other big one is any easier. Ooh, I see my friend Kathy is watching. Hi, Kathy. This one hit a seam too. With these candies, it's really important to make sure that I have the adhesive all the way out to the edge, otherwise it's gonna flip up. And on a gift tag, you know, gift tags are gonna bump into other packages and stuff. Okay, this is driving me crazy. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this down. Whew. There we go, I got lucky on that. How cute are those? Sending peppermint kisses? And if something is slightly off, you could do some layering or something to make, um, to make them lay right you to hide any imperfections in how the adhesive went on. You could do the, you could be, the swirls could be the red and the circles could have been the white. I just happened to already have white for the frosting of the cookies, so I utilized that. That was why I chose to do it the way that I did. What do you think? Is that turning out kind of cute? Should I do one more or should I stick with three? Decorations tend to look best when they're set in sets of three, don't they? So I think I'm going to use dimensionals to put this label on. Can you think of somebody? Let's see, I wanna make sure. Yeah. Um, can you think of somebody that you would wanna put special gift tags on their packages this Christmas? or on little treats for neighbors. I've got two sweet little girls that live, or uh, two ch small children that live next door, a little boy and a little girl. Used to be two little girls, now it's a little boy and a little girl. And uh, I love making goodies for my neighborhood kids. So there, we're gonna put the, okay, that's a little crooked. Have I ever mentioned before how hard this is to do when you can't put your head right over it because the cam you would put your head right in the camera? It's true. And I think that's a little bit straighter. Okay. So now to decide where to put my little, my candies. I could put one up top and two smaller at the bottom or a big one at the bottom. Mm, nope, it's gonna be a big one at the top and two smallers at the bottom. I think. So I'm going to put a dimensional in the middle. I love putting little special touches on my gifts. So this is going to work well for me. And I think I could maybe glue one down flat and, and pop one up with a couple. Actually. So I'm going to adhere this one. Didn't need much glue. And I'm gonna just slide it in under the tag a little bit like that. And then this one, I'm going to do that same trick where I stacked the dimensionals and made it taller. And that way we'll have three different heights of mints on here. And all we have to do is add a ribbon to the top 
and this gift tag will be complete. And all I have to do is position it correctly. There we go. There we go. So this one I used one dimensional. This label has one dimensional and I was just able to lit, uh, lap it over the edge. Here I glued it down flat and here I used two. So we have three different layers of dimensionals going on there. I have the red, real red, sheer open weave ribbon. I'm just going to give it a little guess here at how long of a tag I want and double it. Grab my paper snips and do a <clears throat> Another little drink. I'm going to feed this ribbon. I think I am going to. Yep. Let's see if I get this right. I'm going to feed both ends through at the same time. And feed it through the center just like that. And you could add a bow here if you wanted, or you could leave it just like that. And in this case, I think I'm going to leave it just like that. I do love bows very, very much so, but um, in this particular case, I want it to look a bit different from the tag that we made last week. So here we had the removable ornament. And this one, the message was on the back. This one, the message is on the front. What do you think? Do you think we need any gems? I kind of don't think so, but I think I'm going to leave them off. I like it just the way it is. Okay, friends, so here's what we've got. We have, get some of this mess out of the way. Some of this stuff that doesn't apply to the conversation anymore. We have two gift tags. We have two cards. Any purchase that you make at my online store for $20 or more, I will send you the kits to make these. And the kits would include the cut and the scored cardstock, the, the cut designer series paper, any die cuts. I cannot stamp anything for you. So you would either have to own the stamp set or use uh, stamps that you already have on the labels that I would be providing. So th there is that. For any purchase that's over $35, you would get this same kit and a set of gems from me. Um, uh, yeah. And that's what I have to offer you today. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope that um, this has inspired you and that you feel festive and um, that you've been thinking of people that you can send these to. And I've very much enjoyed my time with you. Stay safe, be well, and God bless.